Hi YouTube, it's me again. Um, I just finished some metal work in my uh, painting over here. Uh, actually, I painted in this one, the thing with the uh, uh, lights in, uh, into my paintings over there. And um, I did basically the groundwork, uh, metal work, and this video is more shorter about uh, how I think when I paint the metal how you put the colors up against each other, the shadows and and stuff like that, you know. And um, maybe you find it interesting, I don't know. Anyway, remember to subscribe to my channel and share my videos on social media and stuff like that. It's really helpful to me to spread my work and you can also donate on my channel if you like to give something back, if you find it helpful and interesting and stuff like that. So. Okay, thank you for watching and until next time, yay, stay cool. Yeah. So, I'm working with this. And, uh, it's quite fun actually. Um, because I have to put in all the points of light and uh, creating the illusion of, of metal which basically is to understand how metal works uh, how it shines, why it shines You see, in metal, you get all the shadows from from the room, and um, if you could actually go deep enough into detail, you would see the room in in all this all these things. Of course, I'm not going there, but I wonder if that would be possible. Anyway, so to put in little contrasts. Uh, also get this right. So just a little bit smaller to brush. <coughs> Just notice that actually this month also lacks a few days because of you know it's like 28 days this month. It's a bitch. <coughs> okay. But well, I will do my best. So. At least I know that.
There are greens, there are yellows, there are blues, there are all kinds of colors in it. And if you go to the museum, you see that they also always, you or usually they only paint impressions of it. And I guess that is probably the best way to to do it. Um, some has gone all the way. But they also tend to be the paintings from the 1300s, maybe. Even Vermeer is quite loose in the details when you look at it. Oh, shit. It's good that I have a mouth. And that too, sometimes I just realize that I painted something, it's almost finished, and I realized I placed it wrong, and then I just start removing it. Oh, 
I don't like it. Maybe I'm 48 now, maybe I have lung cancer. My mother was smoking all, all my childhood, so I'm, I was severely a victim of secondary smoke and it also gave me some asthma, maybe, maybe it did, I don't know. I don't blame her, she didn't know better. I remember we were sitting in my mom's car, a Chevrolet actually, beautiful car, and um, she was smoking like a chimney and, and always listening to Janis Joplin. Mm -hmm. So I still love Janis Joplin. And I did start smoking myself for a while, but because I did a little sports and couldn't actually function, I never became a real smoker. It always annoyed me so that I did. So I just stopped. But, you can get lung cancer <coughs> from just being a lucky guy as uh, Andy Kaufman said when he had lung cancer. You have cancer? from a movie with Jim Carrey. You have cancer? Yeah, I'm a very lucky guy. <laughs> you don't smoke? Yeah, I'm a very lucky guy. No, that's, that's kind of the irony of it. Anyway, um, you might see now how it evolves. It cannot be the same like there as there. It has to be uh, you have to choose, you have to kind of get that down a little bit. And you can enhance the other one. Now you can maybe understand why my paintings take a lot of time. Because I stand maybe stand around for this for hours on end. Trying to get it right. And I need to put in a highlight. But not with white. Highlights you can't just you can put on white somewhere, but not everywhere. So I put on this here. Uh, I'm not sure. Then a little bit. <coughs> One behind here. And I can explain the shape. even harder now when I'm talking so that doesn't really make it any better. Let me see now. It goes like this. It comes a 
right in from the side over there. everything else all the time so <clears throat> but also you must also tear yourself away from what it is so you don't start to paint the symbols of metal you have in your head because we have symbols for everything in our heads and they always keep fucking with us that is why we keep doing the same mistakes everybody do the same mistakes and that's what I tell people if I'm asked how to do this, how to do that and I see that this person hasn't gone beyond the symbolism or the symbols in there, they haven't start observing it. So I kind of urge them to not be artists but only be try to be painters or be scientists because that will actually make it easier. I had a teacher um, in art school that tried to explain that to me and I was not capable of taking in what he said because for many reasons one of them was that I wanted to paint like this and it didn't take me serious so I kind of went into this um, <coughs> uh, rebellious mood but he was a nice guy, his name is actually Tally Nelson Love He's uh, a pretty good painter, abstract painter, Englishman living in Stavanger, Norway. And he tried to explain to me the value of using different kinds of brushes and stuff. And I just wasn't able to take it in. I was so stubborn. And it took me years to actually figure out the things that he told me all by myself. It seemed okay, it was right. But it's maybe also a good way to learn because you learn from your mistakes, really learn from your Anyway, so, and it's also a good thing that if it hasn't dried, it's easier to. Put the color into it, <coughs> and uh, kind of do like this. I can first I push it down, and then I can I pull it back up again, and it can become a mush, a mess.
Well, it's not finished. It's just <coughs> shit. To go to the doctor, I think. And I will also put some blues in here. Bluish. And you also can put on, uh, let it dry, and then you put a lazur over it, like some blue or some reddish. And then you work on top of that again. So, so many possibilities. This is totally wrong. This there is going to be moved. All the way. It's probably the talking. It's, it's very hard because when you paint, it's a good thing to go into this deep unconscious be way of being. So you start just absorbing, and you really start to see. Observe. Make him a little bit better, maybe. Agreed. Yes. It's a good beginning, which I've said now ten times, and it's always hard to tear yourself away from the shit. That's when I first get into it. It's like my brain just say yes, yes. I don't want to leave. I want to stay in that state and stay there forever. It's like watching TV series. You just don't want to stop because you will calm down and and uh, it's like Netflix. It's very dangerous for people with a brain like mine. And the same goes for the painting, but the painting is the positive aspect of it. So if we can become more addicted to the positive things in my life and less addicted to the negatives. So where to go? If I could stand like here and paint and paint and paint and paint and didn't have to sleep, just got into the flow, I think we'd just stay here and paint until I died. Because when you get into the beautiful flow, everything just stops. Huh. It's yeah, it's okay. I need more more concentration. But okay, I hope you get the point. Um, so we keep on ranting now. Yeah.
watching. Okay, so let's see how it turned out. Um, I've been working all night with this and uh, if you can see, I start to get that feeling into it. It's just points of light and blue clear colors, very clear colors. Uh, I think actually Vermeer used to put on some quite clear colors. Um, uh, I need to get the auto focus on, I guess. But as you see, it, I think it became quite quite nice. Um, zoom here. So, that is actually to get the points of light and the dark as good as possible. I will go over it again and then it's going to tighten it up, but I think I have done a good groundwork. Okay, thanks for watching.